Hello, everybody. This is Naturalist James Anderson from the Marion County Park District. Hopefully you are all doing well, practicing social distancing, and most of all, going out and exploring your Marion County parks. So since we've started this uh, lovely quarantine time, I've been noticing a lot of teachers that have uh, been posting videos on their lessons. And uh, I said, you know what? I want to be able to contribute as well. I know I'm not an actual teacher, but I do teach natural resources, and I sure do miss it um, ever since we had to uh, cancel our program. So I decided to, to make some videos, and uh, I, I kind of want to create a new series. Uh, I'm calling it Natural Lessons with Naturalist James Anderson. And uh, these are going to be more focused on uh, school subjects, so things that uh, for elementary, middle school, and high school sciences, for biology, environmental sciences, uh, things like that. So I just uh, I want to be able to help contribute and able to help uh, kids, especially uh, who are having difficulty understanding some different subjects that are in the environmental slash biology uh, field, which you know I, I have a, a good background of. So um, I hope hopefully you can get something out of it. If uh, share with your friends, your neighbors, and uh, I'll do my very best to try to keep a lot of the photography local. Um, I know in some subjects I won't be able to, uh, but this first one I think you're going to enjoy. So, all right, guys. Well, hopefully again, stay safe, stay healthy, but most of all, go out and explore your Marion County Parks. I'm Natchez James Anderson, and enjoy the program. You're watching Natural Lessons with Naturalist James Anderson. Please enjoy the program, and most of all, go out and explore your Marion County Parks. Hello, everybody. This is Naturalist James Anderson from the Marion County Park District. In today's natural lesson, we're going to be talking about food chains, food web, and trophic food pyramids. So what we will be learning in today's episode we're going to be le learning about different components of the food chain. So we're definitely going to learn about conifers, omnivores, predator, prey, um, and some other terminology. And uh, before we go on, that uh, this video it can be geared for elementary and also for environmental science for high school students. Um, we're also going to be defining and going more in depth on food chains food webs, trophic food or energy pyramid. I know it depends on what uh, biology textbook uh, you're looking at. Uh, they're the same thing, they just have a couple different names. So some words that you may want to know. Types of consumers. So we have herbivores and herbivores are organisms that only eat plants. So I always like to remember herb as in plant. Then we have conifers, which are organisms that only eat meat. And then we have omnivores, which are organisms that eat both meat and plants. So some other terminology, we have predators, which are living things that hunt other living things for food. So in this example, we have a coyote. The next uh, terminology is prey, are living things that is hunted for food, such as this uh, grasshopper. And then we have scavengers, which are animals that feed on the remains of dead animals. Uh, vultures are probably the greatest example for here in the state of Ohio and in Marion County. Uh, but we do have a lot of other wildlife that are considered predators, but they can be scavengers as well. Uh, bald eagles are a great example of that. Yes, bald eagles do hunt fish, waterfowl, and other prey species, but if uh, food gets kind of scarce, they will definitely eat uh, dead things, so they can be considered as scavengers. So just kind of keep that in mind that some animals can be uh, multiple things. Now that we have some of the basic terminology out of the way, now we're going to be getting into the food chain, food web, and the trophic food or the energy pyramid aspect of the terminology. And uh, you're definitely gonna be hearing a lot of this terminology for the rest of the lesson. 
So we have producers. So producers, as you see in this picture, is a plant. So how I always remember producers produce. Think of like vegetables and fruits that you would buy at a grocery store. So uh, again, a producer is an organ organism that makes their own food. Um, the plants are a great example of this through photosynthesis. Uh, we'll be definitely talking about in another video later on about what photosynthesis is and what it's all about. But they are also known as, as autotrophs, which are organisms that are able to make their own food. So next is we're going to hear about is the consumers. So I always remember the consumers consume things. So think about you had to consume breakfast, lunch, dinner, a snack, or whatever to gain energy to go about your daily lives. So this is a picture of a red tail hawk eating a delicious bullfrog. So it's consuming the bullfrog. So uh, terminology for this is an organism that has to eat to get energy. Uh, but they're also known as, as heterotrophs. So heterotrophs have to obtain nutrition from uh, organic carbon, usually in the form of other plants and animals. So when we get into the food chain, food web, and the trophic food pyramid, uh, there's different types of consumers. And this is where it can get a little bit tricky because all you're seeing is just the word consumer. But again, there's kind of different types um, or different levels. So our, our first type is the primary consumer. So I put parentheses, these would be our herbivores. So the organisms that only eat plants. So a great example of this in Marion County would be a contail rabbit. Then we have the secondary consumers. Uh, these would be our carnivores um, or omnivores, uh, but they eat the primary consumer. So in this example, this is a red-breasted and hatched the bird and it's eating a insect, and that insect was probably eating uh, some type of plant life. Uh, so again, this nut hatch would be considered the secondary consumer. But then we have the tertiary consumers, and these guys are the ones that eat the secondary consumers. So this is an example of a bald eagle. It's eating a uh, waterfowl species. So um, if you would use this slide, for example, the bald eagle would eat the nut hatch, and then the nut hatch, uh, again, it's eating the, uh, the insect. So uh, again, a lot of different levels or different components of the, uh, of the food chain, food web, and food uh, trophic pyramid, but uh, that just shows the different uh, terminology of the consumers. So when we talk about this, we also have to talk about decomposers. Now, they are not probably the, the one that we don't think about because they're usually really hidden and a lot of them not very attractive. Or in some cases, they're just so small we can't see them with our eyes. So we would have to use microscopes. But decomposers are really, really important for any type of uh, ecosystem. And we'll definitely be making videos later on in time about decomposers and just their real functions. But I, I'll still give you kind of uh, the basic definitions um, of a decomposer. So their basic job is just to break down dead plants and animals. So once, this, once those organisms die, these guys come in and they help break down. So uh, they're able to uh, break, break the things, the living organisms down. So the other living organisms, such as the plants, are able to reuse and recycle that energy. So great examples of our decomposers are our funguses, uh, bacteria. Um, there's there's a lot of different kinds of decomposers, but these are, I guess, our, our poster childs when it comes to it. So uh, again, uh, uh, to kind of go on with the, with the definition, uh, it reduces dead organisms to a simple forms of matter. So again, the other organisms can use. And uh, so it reuses and the nutrients into the soil. Now that we got all the component terminology out of the way, uh, just please remember uh, those uh, terms because again, we're gonna be really hitting them hard for the next few slides, but now we're gonna get into the really the meat and potatoes of the lesson and uh, really talk about the uh, food chains, food webs, and uh, trophic food pyramids. So we'll start out with food chains. 
So the definition for the food chain, it shows how each living thing gets its food and how nutrients and energy is passed from one creature to another. So when you start with any of the food chains, food webs, or the trophic food pyramids, you always have to start with the sun because this is where our energy all starts out from. Uh, so, the, so as the sun, uh, the l light comes through, um, it hits planet Earth, and only just a small little bit is just received into our atmosphere. There are a lot of bits reflected off. Um, not just on top of the atmosphere, but even if it reaches Earth, it bounces off water, bounces off uh, so many other things. So there's not that much energy that is really absorbed uh, from the sun. But again, we always have to start from that. So now we got all these arrows. So it's, uh, it's going to show us the uh, different sections of the uh, food chain. So again, we always start with our sun. Then we have to have our primary producers. So remember our plants. So, because remember, plants, that's how they obtain their food, is from the sun um, through photosynthesis. Now, I know there are other components to photosynthesis, but you got to have sunlight um, in order for that process uh, to really go through. So, again, we start with the sun. We have our primary producers. And then, next we have is the primary consumers, our herbivores. So, our herbivores are going to, going to eat our lovely plants. So, in this case, we have this cottontail eating this uh, evening primrose. And then uh, next level, we have the secondary consumer. So uh, there could be a case that a larger raccoon could eat a small cottontail rabbit. Um, and then again, that rabbit ate the, the plant. And then the plant got its energy from the sun. And then we can end it off with our tertiary consumer, um, our barred owl. So our barred owl could eat a raccoon. And then the raccoon can eat, could eat the small cotton rabbit, and then the rabbit eat the plant, and the plant absorbs from the sun. So I'm sorry I'm, I'm repeating a lot, but this is kind of, again, the process of the uh, food chain. So whenever we talked about decomposers, we talked about that these are the guys that are very important in any ecosystem. Because once, if any of these organisms die, rather it be the plant or the animals, uh, again, the decomposers are going to come in, and they're going to break down their bodies. Uh, so in, into a form that other uh, primary producers, not just flowers, but trees and other uh, plants can reuse and recycle the energy. So then uh, the cycle all starts all over again. So as you see in this diagram, and you've got these arrows, or, or you could guess you call it a chain. It just shows that how the energy flows again from one organism to another. So uh, this just shows how nature is all connected. So food webs. So there's a lot of different definitions with food webs, but basically food webs are food chains, but they look very complex. And you're probably wondering why. Well, I'm going to show you here in the next slide. So you look at this, this slide and you're seeing all these pictures and you're seeing all these arrows and you're like, oh my goodness, there's a lot of activity going on. And you are right. Uh, it doesn't look as uh, clean as the food chain because the food chain was very nice. It was just step by step by step. But if you kind of look at it at a certain way, it is sort of a, a looks like a, a food chain. So I'm going to show you and break it down um, about this food web. So we got our, our blank ecosystem. So remember what we always start out with? That's right, the sun. So then we have to remember... Uh, who gets the most energy from the sun? Our producers. That's right. So we have our plants. And then we have our herbivores or our primary consumers. So I'll kind of go back. So we have our great example. We have a deer. We have a rabbit. We have a mouse. Uh, really great examples of the primary consumers. And then remember who's got to eat these guys. We have these animals. We have uh, raccoons and weasels and snakes and owls, or the secondary consumers. So I'll kind of go back. So as you can see, that uh, again, all the arrows are pointing towards the primary consumers. But remember, that's not where the food web ends. Just like the food chain, we have to usually have some type of apex predator or the tertiary consumers. So 
again, if you kind of look at it at an angle, it is basically like a, a food chain. So again, starting from the sun to producers, to primary consumers, to secondary consumers, to tertiary consumers. So, and I know in the last slide when we talked about food chains, uh, we talked about decomposers. It is very important to put them in there. I admit, uh, using Microsoft PowerPoint, it was kind of difficult uh, trying to put it in there, but you get the idea that decomposers are part of the food web system as well. All right, now we're to the last one, the trophic food pyramid, or also known as the energy pyramid. It just depends on what kind of uh, textbook you use. Uh, same thing, just again, different names. So here's the definition. It's uh, showing the flow of energy at each trophic level in an ecosystem. The width of each bar represents the units of energy available within each trophic level. The height is always the same. And the energy in an energy pyramid is measured in units of kilocalories or kcal. So just like the food web, I know this looks kind of crazy, looks very complex, uh, but don't worry, we're definitely gonna break it down and show you uh, the different levels of the, or components of this food trophic level pyramid. All right, so we're always gonna start again with the sun. Um, it, this is just my diagram of the sun. I just didn't have enough room uh, to put it directly underneath the pyramid, but I've seen some uh, look like this. So we're just showing that the, again, the energy is going up the pyramid. So we have the, uh, the producers, um, our trophic level one, uh, which again are obtaining uh, the most energy from the sun. And then we have our primary consumers, trophic level two. Uh, now, I, I put two in the uh, secondary consumers because when I talk about my one example, uh, when, when we get into the numbers, I'll make a little bit more sense. Um, but, uh, but yes, with traffic level three and four, um, I, I put them as, again, as a secondary consumer. So this is a weasel and a uh, eastern milk snake. And then the apex predator or the tertiary consumer, trophic level five. Uh, he's way there on the top. So let's get into the number aspect of this. So let's just pretend that the sun produced a lot of energy uh, for these plants and produced about 90,000 uh, kilocalories. So um, that means that this plant is receiving the most energy uh, directly from the sun because we've talked about how they're um, autotrophic and able to, you know, make that uh, food, their own food for the process of uh, photosynthesis. But then as we go up the food pyramid, um, we start to get a little bit less uh, because we have to think about uh, energy is being lost. It never disappears. It's just, it's being used in some shape or form. So in the plants, it could be through cellular respiration. Um, it could be from chemical defense. Um, it could be even photosynthesis even requires energy to even make food. Um, so, if you, I mean, you got to kind of think about that in that perspective. So, again, little energy or heat is lost. So now we're getting, we're getting to the trophic level twos or the primary consumers. So now uh, we're losing some more of the, the kilocalories. So now we're only about 9,000. So we're less than 10, or we lost 10%. So then we get into our secondary consumer. So was the weasel ate the rabbit. So now we're at 900 kilocalories. So again, we lost that other 10. Snake eats the weasel, lost another 10%. And then we get clear to the top of the trophic level five or clear on top of the pyramid. So there's only nine kilocalories uh, left. So as you can see, it takes a lot of energy to basically produce a predator. And if you kind of think about it, when you look outside, you know, you see a lot of plants or do you see a lot of squirrels? Well, obviously you see more, more plants. Well, then we get into the animal aspect. So do you see more squirrels or do you see more bobcats? Well, we're going to see more squirrels because again, it just, uh, the squirrels are getting most of that energy from, from the plant or the producer. So, um, so again, as we go up each time of the pyramid, we lose that 10% um, of that energy. 
So then we get the uh, decomposer aspect of it. So just keep in mind that each level, each trophic level has a decomposer because eventually these animals or plants uh, will pass away. Uh, so we already talked about the function of the uh, decomposers. And, um, and even decomposers lose a little bit of energy because it does take energy to uh, digest and break down these uh, producers and these consumers. All right, everyone. Well, I hope you enjoy our first natural lesson with naturalist James Anderson. So a little recap of what we just learned of the different components of a food chain, food web, and the energy pyramid. Um, we also defined and went in depth of food chains, food webs, and the trophic food or energy pyramid as well. So I was really excited to do this video um, for several reasons. First, it was my first uh, really educational uh, video that I've really have ever done. Uh, I really enjoyed it. It took a lot of time, but I'm definitely want to do more in the future. But one of the other big reasons I really enjoyed this is that probably about 95% of the photos that you just saw um, on this presentation uh, from are actually local photographers in Marion County. So I know probably not every lesson I will probably not be able to do that, but uh, but for this one, I, I'm just I'm pretty proud that we have such a, a variety of different local photographers and that they're willing to share uh, their work as well. So I want to have a big thank you for Bob Turner, Heather Smith, Amy Holloway, Brenda Bosley, Lola J. Pryor, and then myself. So uh, some other uh, photos uh, that came from the Internet uh, from Pixabay.com and from Unsplash.com. Well, everyone, I hope you enjoyed that video that you just watched. If there's a particular subject in environmental science, biology, or something in nature that you're having a little bit trouble or want to go more in depth of, uh, please let me know. Either message me on the Marion Tallgrass Trail Facebook page, or uh, you can leave a comment in the section below, and I will definitely try my very best to do some research and to provide a video and a lesson of what I just did with food chains, food webs, and energy pyramids. Do you want to contribute some of your local wildlife pictures for education for our next natural lessons? Well, you sure can. Message us on the Marion Tallgrass Trail or on the Marion, comma, Ohio County Park District Facebook pages. This is probably the easiest way to get hold of us. Uh, we also have an Instagram account on the Marion County Park District. So this can be from any type of local wildlife from Marion County. Um, it can be any type of bird or mammal or plants. Uh, we would sure love to show everybody's uh, wonderful work, and we'll definitely give you credit uh, like we did in this video at the end. And uh, we just love to show that, you know, we have such a great diversity of wildlife in Marion County. So, all right, guys, make sure to go out and explore your Marion County parks. I am naturalist James Anderson from the Marion County Park District.